Hi everyone, welcome to today's Facebook Live with Paul's Kitchen and Swan. I've been inspired by the lovely weather today to do some barbecue stuff. I've just received my new Swan gas barbecue, which is absolutely awesome. Built that yesterday and I'm going to do some great recipes for you today. I'm going to do a lovely chicken dish, a classic jerk chicken. Show you how to prepare that, nice and simple. How to cook it on the barbecue. And then I'm going to do a beautiful fruity salsa with that with mango, red onion, a little bit of chilies and coriander. And then I've got a vegetarian dish of bang bang cauliflower. So if you've got any questions, please fire them away. Enjoy the sun, get your barbecues out, and uh, we'll give this a go. On camera today is my son Spike. So if you have any questions or any shout outs where you're from, please put them on. If we can't see them because of Facebook, we will answer them all later. So welcome. So first of all, I'm going to show you our chicken dish which is a lovely jerk chicken. So we've got a good quality chicken here. And what we're going to do is we are going to prepare the chicken and show you how easy it is and how to cook it really well. Now the first thing we're going to do is butterfly this chicken. So if I get my chicken here, and you see this down the back is the spine. So each side of what they call the parson's nose, with some strong scissors, I'm going to cut. Okay. All the way down to the front, like so, and they, they will snip. People think that they can't cut through, but the scissors will cut through. And then the other side, and that gets rid of the backbone, the spine, but also helps keep the chicken flat on the barbecue. And this is what you get out, look, nice and simple. Now they're great for things like making stocks, so you could freeze them in batches and make a lovely chicken stock. Okay. Me to say best to flatten it like so, and that is look at that how easy that is. There's a flat chicken, spatch cocked. It's at room temperature. I've left it out for about half an hour. If it's room temperature, it will cook more evenly. Give my hands a wash again, and then I'm going to do my jerk spice mix. So get yourself a blender like this if you haven't got one. A little swan blender. I've got some vegetable oil in there, 100 mils. In there, I'm going to go with some salt, some allspice, and some green peppercorns, some garlic, and these chilies of Scotch bonnets. Now, these have kick. So, my recipe on, on says three, but these are big ones. I'm putting two in there. Be careful of these. If you don't like something with a good kick to it, put in something milder, like a jalapeno. Rebecca said, hello Paul and everyone. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm going to put in my salt and my allspice, but I'm just going to give my peppercorns a, bit, a little grind. I don't want them whole. So in my peppercorns, my pestle and mortar. And then just going to grind them down. Now green peppercorns, if you can't get your hands on them in a supermarket, just use black peppercorns. But green ones give a lovely fragrance and it's more traditional for this recipe. Have a look at that. So there's my green peppercorns, quite a fruity smell, lovely. That goes in there. Now I've got some ginger. So my ginger is a thumb sized piece of ginger, I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase, but that's literally the sort of size of your thumb and length that works. Now come in close and watch this, this is how you peel ginger. With a spoon on its back, and that way you keep all your ginger without wasting too much. It's really easy, you can get ginger graters, but this is just as easy, just as efficient. And you know what, everybody's got a spoon, look how easy that was. Nice and clean. Even if you wash your ginger as well, it can go straight in with the skin on. Just thought I'd show you that little hack, how that works. Now it goes in there, so it's got some beautiful ginger, some garlic, some spices. Beth said that was such a great hack. It is such a good way to do ginger. It's two brilliant hacks for ginger. One, use the back of a spoon. The other one, which I do all the time, and I'm going to show you in a minute, have your ginger frozen in the freezer to grate. I'll show you that in a second on the next recipe. There are my two 
few options you have. Okay, so we've got some lime zest going in here. Zest of two limes and juice of two limes. This is going to give it a lovely punch and a lovely bit of acidity. That lovely sourness and freshness that lime does. Lime really reminds me of sunshine. And that's right there. Another good hack for limes is, see how they're a bit yellowy? They're full of juice, they're the best ones. So when you're looking in the supermarkets for limes, look for the ones that look less attractive because they're the ones with the most juice in them. The really super green ones are great to look at, but they're not ready yet. And you can't get enough juice out of them. So, there we go. Put that lime in there. And then we will put the juice in there. So lots of lovely, look how much juice is coming out of that. That. Amazing. Lots of juice. Like so. Right. Then, last thing going in there is a couple of tablespoons of honey. This is going to give a nice sweetness. And that will give a lovely balance to the heat of the scotch bonnets and it will tone down the sharpness of the line. Give that a shake and give that a blow. There we go. There's our lovely marinade. Just going to give it a little bit longer. So there's our gorgeous marinade. Now this is enough marinade to do a full chicken. So what I want you to do is put half in with your, in a bowl with your chicken. And I want to put the other half in a bowl. And that's when we're constantly basting the chicken every 15 minutes on the barbecue. That's going to give layers and layers of lovely marinade. Bit of a messy job now. What I want you to do with this is rub it into that chicken. In every conceivable nook and cranny. It needs to get right in there. And ideally, if you can do this overnight for the next day, or if you can do this at least two hours before you need it, you're gonna give it a beautiful flavor. The salt's gonna help cure that chicken. It's gonna, all the beautiful flavor's gonna get in that marin, into that chicken from the marinade. And that is gonna be wonderful. So, have a look at that spike when I wash my hands. There we go, nice and clean again. Now, let's have a look at the barbecue, because I've already got a chicken on. So, here's my beautiful new barbecue by Swan. Check that out. Swan al fresco, gas barbecue, really easy to build. Got this the other day, I'm so excited. I've got loads of barbecues, I've got smokers, I've got uh, solid fuel barbecues, but I really wanted a gas one. This is perfect for me. Sometimes you can't get wood, it's really good to get a gas barbecue. So it's got a dial here. I'm keeping it low because I'm cooking it with the lid on. So it's about 150. And here is one of the chickens I had earlier. Look at that. Yeah. This only takes about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the chicken. Here's my other half of the marinade, which I was talking to you about. And all I'm doing here is giving that a baste. And I'm just letting that do its thing, slow and low. When it juices hit that little bars underneath, you can see it's just making a little bit of smoke. Got my little tongs here, I'm just going to flip that over. And this gorgeous caramelised jerk chicken, look at that. Just put some more marinade on that. Beck said that looks delicious. That looks absolutely breathtaking. Look at that. Gonna put that on there. That's lunch sorted. That is lunch for me and Spike. Plenty of marinade. Just continue to cook that. That's gonna take another 15 minutes or so. That's lovely. I'm gonna leave this chicken over here and I'm gonna marinade, make the salsa for 
to go with the chicken. The hands are clean. Remember when you're using raw chicken, always keep your hands nice and clean. Just move yourself away. And then, a beautiful fruity sort of salsa that goes well with this is mango. Mango's are really delicious. So you can use pineapple, but I'm using mango on this. With this, I've got some red onion. All I've done on the red onion is I've kept the root on. I will show you how to do that. And then, come in close by, watch this. You just thinly slice without going all the way through to the root. See that? Nice and small. And that's held together by that root. That's the key. Nice and small, take your time. Don't cut through the root. It keeps it well held together. All I want to do now is a couple of slices that way. Once again, not through the root. It's still held together. That way it keeps things nice and clean. And you don't get your stuff all over the place. I'm just going to fine dice that now. And you can use to keep the roots if you want, like I said with the chicken bones. They're great for soups and sauces, so whack them in the freezer bag. Put them in the freezer if you want. And again, nice and small. No rush, make sure it's nice and neat. There's a small red onion there. Goes into the bowl. And then I've got two chilies, jalapenos. A bit milder, but with a little bit of kick still. I'm going to just chop that tops off. Well, a good way to test if your chilies are hot, if you have a look inside, you've got the seeds and you've got the membranes around the seeds. That's where the heat is. So, have a little bit of flesh, just a tiny bit, like so. Check it on your tongue. If it's not too hot, crack on with the seeds. If you feel it's quite aggressive, Take the seeds out. Me, it's chilly. I'm leaving the seeds in. You need to feel that kick. You can drink a couple of nice light beers if you want to cool your mouth down, or a soft drink if you're that way inclined, and then that will help balance it. But seeds is going in chilies. It smells amazing. Totally different to the Scotch bonnet chilies, which I blended earlier. The Scotch bonnet chilies were fiery and they've got a lovely smoky flavour that really works well with the um, with the jerk, it's really classic. But here's another layer of chilli, chop it up nice and small, and that goes in like so. Remember if you've got any questions, fire them away. Dave has just said, hi I've only just joined, what is what are you preparing? Hi Dave, we are doing barbecue today with my lovely new Swan Alfresco barbecue grill. I'm doing some classic Jamaican jerk chicken. I've got spatchcock, some lovely marinade. I'm doing a beautiful salsa. And then I'm going to do some cauliflower bang bang. So thanks for joining. So lime zest goes in there. Like so, nice and simple. A pinch of salt. That just helps break down the juices and the onions will make them look a little bit more pink and it will also just soften the harsh acidity that the onions give out. Do that nice and early. Get some lime juice in there, like so. There we go. And then we're going to put some olive oil in there. Some good quality extra virgin olive oil is good. Buy the best you can afford. Another question from Dave. What's your favourite to do on the barbecue? Chicken. Chicken or prawns. I like uh, prawn kebabs. I also love this chicken anyway. Some other time I might show you a uh, classic uh, beer can style chicken. Um, I love it in chicken thighs. I love it doing it like Japanese, tandoori or, or Indian. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, I like also doing, turn this uh, down to really low, put some... Um, Play some like sort of trays on the um, bars 
and then you could have the temperature at only about 110 degrees and that's great for doing a whole leg of lamb really slowly for about five hours i'm not sure you want to have these days and of course how could you forget some gorgeous ribs so there's plenty to go at plenty of ideas i might fire your way right now is the mango here so beautiful white mango all i'm going to do is just give that a little peel Carefully, and you do this. If you're not comfortable about being in your hand, do it in slices and peel each slice carefully. Dave said, sounds amazing. He loves lamb and ribs. Oh, lamb's awesome. Ribs are even better. Um, there we go. Look at that mango. It's beautiful and ripe. Look at all them juices. This gives a great bit of fruitiness to that fiery chicken. Yeah, so now we're going to dice this small again. There we go. A question from Mida. Yeah. Any other fruits you could use if you don't like mango? Yes, Mida. Um, pa uh, passion fruit is brilliant with it. Pineapple is awesome. If you don't like that, you can use things like cucumber, which would be great. Um, Ooh, what else? Um, Paw if you can get your hands on it. Banana's brilliant. Plantain, there's loads to go on. Think of all them classic sort of uh, Caribbean fruits and vegetables and they will all work well with it. But uh, I particularly like mangoes. That's why I'm doing with mango. Right, so a mango goes in there, like so. And look at the colours of that. So that's just going to sit for about 15 minutes before I serve it. It smells really delicious with the lime and the onions. Can you imagine a spoonful of that with your chicken? Amazing, amazing, look at that. Right, I'm gonna have a look at my chicken again. I'm gonna give it another bit of base. Let's have a look. Look at that. Come on, <laughs> look at that. That is different league. Keith, don't be scared of this basting. It's just getting better and better, the layers of flavours. I can vouch that it does look amazing. <laughs> that is absolutely different class. Look at that. Right. Wonderful. Right, so I'll get rid of that and now we're going to prepare the cauliflower. So this is a great way to do this cauliflower. And what I'm going to do here is just got a whole beautiful cauliflower that's been washed. And I'm going to cut. See where the uh, root is there? I'm just going to cut sort of a centimetre each side of that. Like so. And I am not throwing that away. That's going to be kept for something else. Be a nice roasted, grilled, be great on um, in a bit of a sort of um, grated as rice if you're not using any carbs um, we love it like with, with mac and cheese and bacon through there so and then this all I'm doing with this I'm just cutting it directly down the middle careful when you do this and there's our two gorgeous cauliflower steaks they're going to be char grilled with lots of colour I'm going to put my coconut oil on here. So I've melted it first in the oven. Come and have a look. I've just put it in an oven, put the temperature up, switched it off, and just let that melt because it will melt with its sl slightest bit of heat. Lots of co coconut on there. I'm going to give it a nice season. Like so. A bit of pepper. Turn it over. And I'm going to put some more coconut on there. I want to have this lovely caramelized, a bit more salt and pepper. Excellent. I want this as a, as a stronger heat. 
So because I've got three sections of this, that's on low, that's keeping that on low, I'm going to put this on high, and I'm going to do it this side, because I want some colour on this. So that temperature's going to go up that side, I'm going to leave that to get some lovely barbecue marks. Get rid of this, I'll clean down. Lots of washing today, but that's okay. We'll make Spike work for his lunch. Just give him that board a little clean. And then we'll make the bang bang cauliflower dressing. <laughs> Really easy, bang bang cauliflower. Question, question from Dave. Yes. Can you recommend a beer or wine to go with this? Beer and barbecue go hand in hand. Dave, we're singing off the same hing sheet. Me, I like a nice cold, fruity style IPA. If you want a wine to go well with this, you want a nice robust white wine, something like an Australian or New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, something that's got acidity, something with a little bit of sweetness. But IPA ranges are brilliant, especially the ones with have a little fruity back notes slightly cloudy, there's millions out there, give it a try. Or a really classic European cold pilsner. And most important thing, put that glass in the freezer and get that glass frosted. That's even better. Right, so, here is my bang bang. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna finely dice an onion, like so. A little caramelization on this. And bring this over. And what this grill's got, believe it or not, is a little stove on the side. Come on, look. So, got a little ring there. Switch that on. Perfect. And you can make your sauces. You can keep things hot in there. And you can cook outside. Because that's the key when you're barbecuing. You keep an eye on that fine. Right, so I've got my onions going in there. That's nice. I'll get my garlic. Coming close. Bring my garlic in there. Bit of noise in the churchyard. Eh? Must be uh, doing the grass, make a lovely for summer. Dave said that uh, does that act as a hot plate also? I noticed it has a lid on it. It does, yes. You can keep things in there. It acts as a hot plate on top and it keeps things just nicely ticking over. You can put your chicken on that when that's down, turn it right down. Put your chicken on there, cover it over, and that will keep things lovely and hot. So there is my onions, just beautiful, just start off there. Great idea to have this. You can bring things back to warm, you can have your marinades hot. So for example, this marinade here, if you wanted to serve some spare of that, you could put that in the pan and just warm that up gently. Let's have a little look where we're at. I mean, I keep, when well, I'm doing cauliflower, but I can't help keep showing you the chicken. Let's see if we've got any caramelization. Look at that, beautiful. Turn that now. See, the temperature's gone up, but that's because, I've just turned that up as well, that's because um, this bar is on full, that section there. Put this one on full now, that chicken's nearly coming to an end. Now, in there, I've got my garlic, I've got my um, onions, I'm going to do my lime now. So I want some lime juice and lime zest. That goes in there. Delicious. I just want to cook these onions out, because if I don't, they're just a bit crunchy. I want a bit of texture, but I just don't want too much in there. So that's absolutely perfect. Keep, keep an eye on that. Get yeah, right close for me. Put my 
wine juice in there. Look at that. Perfect. Here is my ginger I was talking about. So this is absolutely solid. It's like a brick. That's perfect for grain. I'm going to grate it in there. Because it comes in, it goes in like snow. That's just been washed. So it's really easy to grate without losing, without getting all that fibrous stuff. Look at that. Look at that, just like snow. Really easy. Plenty of ginger in there. Be patient, takes a bit of time. There we go. Put them off. It goes in there just nicely. Let's have a look at this now. Cheese. Let's take it along a bit. Flour, which I've turned over, just softening nicely now. Put that down. I'm going to bring my pan in here now. We can finish it off in here. So there's my onions, nice and soft. I'm going to put a bit more ginger in. Like so. And then it's going in with peanut butter. So a good tablespoon of peanut butter. Going in there. That gives it a lovely taste. Going in with some sriracha. Question from Thomas. What could you use instead of cauliflower? Um, this is great with things like peppers. This is great with aubergines. This is great... Um, with um, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, brilliant. If you want to keep it veggie, also great with meat and fish. But if you want to keep it veggie, um, definitely try aubergine and definitely try sweet potatoes, butternut squash, really delicious. Have a look at that there. There's the sriracha in there, there's the peanut butter. I'm now gonna go in with some sesame oil. Really good quality sesame oil, pure sesame oil and then some soy sauce. Like so. so I'm not adding any extra seasoning to this, that'll be enough. And that is my nice, gorgeous sriracha. Look at that. That is really flavoursome. Look at that, beautiful. It smells amazing. Right, I'm going to get this chicken off because this chicken's ready. Show you how to rest it. There's my chicken. It's cooked to perfection. And all I want to do with that is rest it. Rest that for about 10 15 minutes before I eat it. You can tell it's really gorgeous and tender. Give a little bit of seasoning. It smells amazing. Doesn't it just? A little bit of salt. And you can if you want. Just put a little bit of your lovely salsa over that. And of course, some lovely chopped coriander. Right. So I'm going to get some chopped coriander. Like so. Put the keen, fresh chopped coriander all over that. Little side dish of salsa. There is our 
first dish finished and beautiful and perfect. We've got jerk chicken with salsa, mango, some lovely spices. Now that is perfect. Let me move that out of the way for you so you can have a good look at that. Get right in on that side. We finish that off with a little bit of lime, but that's perfect. Right, give my tip a little clean. This coriander, I'm also going to put some in my bang bang cauliflower. Like so. I'll bless that cauliflower a little bit more with it. So, there's my bang bang ready. I'm going to check out my cauliflower now. Let's have a look. That's caramelized and gorgeous. I can feel that that's softened right up there. Let's have a look at this colors. Look at that, beautiful. Give a little few more minutes. Give a little bit more cocoa on there. That's just needs two more minutes. I just caramelize it now with the lid open. So if I keep the lid open, the lid is gonna allow the flames to lick up that's going to give me more color the little tip if you want to stop the flames on a barbecue spray with a little bit of uh, water in a clean container with a little bit of sugar and uh, vinegar put the lid down straight away that will stop any flames licking up and I want some flames licking then I want to get that caramelization and this is how I would do steaks when I was cooking steaks I have the lid up I have it on hot and that's the way I get that beautiful caramelization. Look at that. The are great, non stick, look at that. Red colour. Get a bit more. Uh, Dave said, what, would that be the same for coals? For what, sorry? For coal, coals. Yes. So if you're using a uh, charcoal or any coals like that, use the lid. Um, if you have a lid, um, to extinguish any flames absolutely so we keep an eye on that spike while i get my uh, plate ready keep my plate up there to keep warm i want to put it on my hot plate why not let's do that just gonna keep it nice there Turn it low, give it a little bit of heat. Look at that caramelization, gorgeous. That'll be enough, I don't want it too hot. I'm going to get some of my sauce. I want some of this to caramelize on there. A lovely bang bang cauliflower caramelizing nicely. Dave just asked, what's the best steak to do on a barbecue? For me, Dave, I like ribeye. You want something with plenty of uh, um, fat in there, that fat will render out and that will give it a beautiful flavour. Um, for me, you want something with a bit of fat or you want something like a nice sirloin steak. Fill it. Be, be careful with fill it because it's, it's a, an intense heat and fill it needs a bit of fat. But if you keep brushing the fillet with like a bit of butter or a bit of oil, it should be fine. I'm just going to flip it once. A bit more marinade on there. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Then I'm going to go in to my dish with my gorgeous roasted bang bang cauliflower. Look at the colour of that. My dressing over the top. Go back. Nice. Switch it off. Brilliant. Right. I'm going to finish this off with my frozen ginger. I'm going to do a little bit of freshly grated ginger on top of there. It should be amazing flavour. Unbelievable smells. I'm going to do a little drizzle. Soy, a little drizzle, sesame oil, 
I've got a few cashew nuts here, which I'm just gonna gently chop up just for texture. If you have obviously a nut allergy, don't bother. There's a few nuts on there. I'm gonna do some very finely sliced spring onions. And just the greens. Going all over that, beautiful. Everyone says it looks amazing. This is really delicious, trust me. And I finished off with some gorgeous fresh corn. Look at that. Now, if you go to a barbecue, can you imagine if you had that cauliflower? That's enough there, probably for four people. That chicken's enough for four people. And that salsa. That's what you get if you come to my house. That's what I call a barbecue. We're going to have that for our lunch, I means bike. We're really lucky. Aren't we lucky for eating this lovely food? Very lucky. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for the brilliant noises and orchestra in the background from our gorgeous grass cutters. Unexpected, but always at the right time. Sorry if I dropped my phone. Um, uh, just one question. Yeah. Dave says, are you listing the recipes anywhere? Yes, Dave, these recipes are on the page. So go to Swan, look for the event. It's the barbecue, all the recipes are on there. Find any questions if you're not sure on anything, watch the video over and over again. I'm sure um, Swan put these on things like YouTube and stuff. It's brilliant. Thank you, Swan, for my lovely barbecue. I'm going to use it all the time. And this, we're going to have a great lunch. So enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.